All right, so we are going to machine sew a nine patch pillow. The first thing you need to do is kind of conceptualize what you want your design to be, what fabrics you're gonna choose. You can use up to three fabrics and how you're gonna lay them out, what's gonna look attractive together. So here are some different examples and suggestions. You can be creative. It's gonna be nine patches. Then you need to go to the fabric bins and you need to find fabric that'll allow you to trace this four and a quarter inch uh, square. So obviously this is a piece that you would not be able to use, right? You might be able to get one square, but you wouldn't be able to get four or five out of it. So this fabric is not usable. All right, so on the white fabric that I chose, just like you did other years, you're gonna use sandpaper and the wrong side of the fabric, all right? So if your fabric has a design, make sure it's on the wrong side. Solids are the same on both sides. You're going to put your template close to the edge, but not on the edge, following the grain line of the fabric. You're gonna use a sharp pencil, holding the template still, angled pencil, drag it, uh, dark enough to see, but not so dark that it bleeds through the fabric. And you're gonna do, if you are gonna cut out, uh, trace four squares or five squares, they should be touching. You don't wanna waste fabric and have a little space in between. Have the line of this be the new line of the second square. Make sure, take the time to pay attention to the details to trace evenly. All right, so you're gonna trace the number of squares that you need and then using sharp shears, cutting exactly on the line, not bigger, not smaller. All right, notice I kind of hold it underhand and I put the line of the uh, blade along, aligned with the line on the fabric and I'm gonna cut out all of my squares. All right, so I'm gonna wind up with the squares that I lay out in the design that I like. So all of this is garbage trash that gets thrown in the trash can. And any leftover pieces that are big like this, but not big enough to make another square out of, can go in the scrap bin that you know we keep under the telephone. So I've laid out all of my squares, and I know what I'm doing because I'm following the directions. Okay, the directions tell me that the squares here, we're calling column A, and the squares here, we're calling column B, and the squares here, column C. All right, for the first step of the project, we're gonna fold an A onto a B, sort of like we're making a book. We don't need the C's. So we're gonna fold an A, we're gonna use two pins, we're gonna align them, use your fingers to line them up. The more accurate you are, the more likely to have all of your squares lining up after you sew. So two pins in and out, like you're taking a hand sewing stitch. Fold this closed like a book, line it up. Take the time to be precise. In and out, all right, you could certainly do um, the pin, pin the pin this way if you wish, it's your choice, and you're gonna do the same thing on this last set, okay? Then you're gonna take these squares and bring them over to the sewing machine, and you are going to sew them together, just like I did here on the three-line back stitching. So we're gonna go to the sewing machine, You've threaded it. You've tested it out on a piece of scrap. You have your bride and your groom between the toes coming out the left, and you found your 3 8 inch guide that you're gonna follow, and you know that the reverse button is over here on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna start up a little. I'm gonna sew backwards about three stitches. All right, I'm gonna sew forward. And since I don't want the machine to jam, when I get close to the pin, I'm going to remove it. And when I get close to this pin, I'm going to remove it. And when I get down to the end, I'm going to hit the reverse button, go back three stitches, forward and off, lift up the presser foot, 
raise the take up lever, pull the bride and groom out about six inches, and there's a thread cutter on the left of the sewing machine that will cut your thread. And I'm gonna do that with all three sets of my A's and B's. And then I'm gonna open up my A and my B. I'm gonna bring back my C's and I'm going to fold them backwards like a Hebrew book, closing the book backwards. I'm gonna pin it on this way, pin it on this way, pin it on this way. So I'm gonna take it, two pins, two pins is enough. All right, I'm gonna bring this now. So the two that you've sewn already are open this way. You don't see any stitching. And the one that you're gonna sew is aligned like this. I'm gonna do the same thing, put it in, back about three inches, it's an estimate. And you get close to the pin, remove it. Go as slow as you need to go in order to be accurate and hold it on that three eighths inch line. And you get to the end, back three, forward, press your foot up. Take up lever up, pull out six inches, cut the thread. And at this point, you would be ready to press in opposite directions. I know this because I'm reading the directions in the instruction sheet. So I've plugged in the iron. All right, I have made sure that somebody or I filled it with water. I have the steam dial on, right? I filled it with water here. And I need to kind of let it sit for about two or three minutes till I smell it getting hot, till I hear it getting hot, okay? And I will test it. And when I hear steam and uh, when the ironing board feels hot, I'll know it's ready. So I need to give this another minute or two. I can always test it by shooting out some steam, which will help me know that it's ready. Iron, touch, be careful. All right. so. First, I've got to lay out my design on the ironing board. And then I have to turn them all upside down, wrong side up. And I'm just choosing to start going this way on the top one, this way in the middle one, and this way on the right one. So I hold my hand, all right, I pull. I iron towards my hand, but I'm not stupid, and I don't iron over it. Then I'm gonna do, now, I wanna iron this the other way. So I'm just gonna turn it. All right, I'm gonna turn it like this, depending on your design. Okay, so this is gonna be opposites going this way. And I've got my last row going this, this way. And for good luck, I turn them all right side up and I press them as big as I can get them. Pressing just means ironing. I'm not really holding the iron down very hard on my fabric, I'm just pulling. Okay, when I've got those three done, I need to come back to the table. And I need to pin them together. Flipping down, I'm following my directions. All right, top row gets flipped onto the middle row. I start from the beginning, how you flip, Mrs. Rosenbaum. I line it up, fold it over. I've got to fold it back to see that I'm lining it up. Hopefully I cut evenly, hopefully I sewed evenly and I'm gonna fold it back. This is really where the precision is. And then I'm gonna take my pin, I'm gonna pin on my seam here. I'm gonna pin on my seam, flat, no puckers here. And I'm gonna peek, I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna see if I did a good job pinning. If I need to adjust it, if I don't like what I did, I'm gonna realign it. And make sure I pin it flat. Flat here and flat here, all right? Now I take this to the sewing machine. This is some tricky sewing because you don't wanna flip your flap. So you're gonna do the same exact thing that we did, sewing back three inches, 
Remove the pin with your young fingers, not your arthritic hands. But when you get right here to your flap, go slowly and make sure your flap doesn't get flipped. Keep it going in the direction you had it. See, now don't let it get crunched like that. Lift up, get the needle in, lift up the foot and lower it so your flap stays straight. So as slowly as you need to, to be accurate. I've been sewing a few years. And get down to the end, back three. Foot up, take up lever up, out six inches and cut. All right, and now you're going to pin and add your third line. So, biggest mistake made is that people put the third row on the wrong side. So make sure that you put the third row where you want it. Flip up. I'm going to turn it because it's easier for me to work this way. I'm going to do my preliminary pinning, turning, folding, aligning, testing. This is the part where I really want to be precise because this really makes or breaks the pillow. And then when I have finished sewing this row on as well, I'm gonna pin here, smooth, no ruffles, no puckers. When I have finished sewing back three across, back three and off, and I fold this up, you're gonna wind up with three rows where the middle row at this moment is smaller than the other two rows. At this point, you would be ready to iron and find the fabric that you're gonna put on the back of your nine patch pillow.